Welcome back to the Band Guide. I'm your Band Guy, Colin, and today is my first video of 2023. So it only feels right that we talk about making goals and improving because that's kind of what Januarys are for, right? And since you clicked on this video, I'm guessing you share in my goal of creating more and better sounding music in 2023. But I don't want this to just be like a New Year's resolution type video. The problem is I'm sure we all know with New Year's resolutions are that they're rarely actually accomplished. Instead, I'm going to be sharing five tips or principles that kind of go together to create an actionable system that if you follow will guarantee you finish more music this year and it will actually sound better. In fact, I've been following this system since I first started my own studio nine years ago and it helped me finish way more music than I'd ever imagined and I'm currently using it to plan how my band Broke Royals will be finishing our fourth full-length album this year even though I'm about to have a baby. It's kind of crazy. Okay, let's get into it. Principle number one, forget about your goal and focus on your system. This is a concept from James Clear's book, Atomic Habits, which is a great book, by the way. And the idea here is that focusing on a goal is kind of like staring at the scoreboard during a game instead of actually playing the game, right? You're never going to score the points if you're just looking up at the scoreboard the whole time. So forget about your goal and focus on the system playing the game that's actually going to get you to that goal. The goal is the end result that you want to achieve, but it's not what's going to get you there. The system is what's going to actually get you the result that you want. So if your goal is to finish more music this year, your system will be how often you actually sit down to write, record, mix, and master your songs. And if your goal is to make your music sound better, then your system will be learning recording and mixing techniques, how you practice recording and mixing music, and your method for receiving feedback from peers and mentors. So use your goal to set the direction and then create your system and then forget about the goal and just focus on the system. By doing this, we accomplish two major things. First, we actually get it done. If you don't work on your system, you may never actually accomplish the goal. If you spend all your time focusing on that goal, it's kind of like staring at the scoreboard. You might not actually get anything done. The second is that you'll enjoy the process more. If you attach your happiness to the completion of a goal, you won't be happy until you actually complete it. So you're not going to enjoy the entire time you're working on it, which is a lot of the time that we're actually making the music. We want to enjoy all of that, right? The other thing is if life gets in the way, we might not actually accomplish that goal. And that's okay. It's not the end of the world. So it's okay if you don't finish it, but if you attach your happiness to completing this specific goal, then you may never be happy. Another reality is that achieving your goal really looks exactly like you imagine it. So when you accomplish it, it likely won't feel like you imagine it would because our goal is some weird, perfect, amorphous version of it itself. And when, if we accomplish it, it might not feel the way we imagine that feeling. So there's a good chance, even if you accomplish it, you still won't be happy. So by focusing on the system and not just the goal, you can enjoy the entire process. Okay, let's talk about principle number two, which is Parkinson's law. Parkinson's law simply states that work expands to fill the time available for its completion. AKA, if you give yourself a month to finish something, you're gonna take a month to finish it. If you give yourself a day to finish it, you'll likely finish it within that day. Think back to school. If you had a paper and your professor or teacher said, this paper is due in six weeks, then are you going to finish it in two weeks? No, you're going to finish it in six weeks. There's a good chance you might not get a lot done for those first four and a half, five, five and a half weeks, and you're going to rush and finish that paper at the very, very end. Whereas if they just said, hey, this paper is going to be due in two days, you'll likely finish that exact same paper, a very, very similar paper in those two days. So we're going to swell the amount of time that we spend working on something to the amount of time that we give ourselves. So you don't just want to set one date that's way far out there. For example, I want to finish more music this year, or I want to finish an album by the end of this year, because we're likely going to finish an album by the end of this year. And there's nothing wrong if that's the goal, but it's really, really hard to actually get it done because that's almost amorphous. It's so big, it's so far out there, and most likely we're going to get really close to that deadline and end up having to try to slam a lot of work in and maybe won't end up being able to finish it because it was too far away, too big of a deadline, too big of a goal. And instead, we need to kind of chunk it out into smaller, more imminent deadlines. So instead of more music this year, what about one song every month? right? Don't just set a date and be done with it, but always have an imminent deadline. So for example, you want to break out 
one song a month into smaller, more individualized things. So you can say, I want to finish all the guitars by the end of this day. I want to finish all the drums by the end of this day. I want to finish all the vocals by the end of this day. And having that imminent deadline is going to get more done and it's going to give you a clearer, more actionable process as you're working on your music. And if you do that across the year, you'll actually finish that album in the year and you're not going to save it all until September to start really seriously finishing this album because you told yourself you're going to do it. And you'll actually get it done in a much more reasonable and stress-free way. So Parkinson's Law, you're going to take as much time as you give yourself. So break it out into individual smaller bundles and always have an imminent deadline and you'll actually get things done. And principle number three, you don't have time, you make time. I'm sure you've heard this before, but it's so true. The reality is that we as humans are inclined towards easy, fast, rewarding things. And sometimes making music is not actually super easy or fast and rewarding. Sometimes it takes some work and some effort and that's not always going to be your inclination to sit down and do some of that just work on creating this music. And so if you want to do that, you need to actually schedule in time that you're going to do it and you need to hold yourself accountable to it. This is one of the beautiful things about booking to go record in a studio. It's very expensive. You could spend hundreds, thousands of dollars recording in a studio, but you're going to put it on your calendar. You're going to show up. You've spent money on it. So you're going to go and take advantage of it. And you know, when you leave that studio, you'll walk away with something that you finished because you put that time on your calendar and you went and did that thing. So we have to bring that same sense of responsibility and professionalism to ourselves. Treat your recording setup like a studio that you're paying to go spend time in. Put it on the calendar the same you would as if you booked it and then actually go and spend time and work on the music that you've told yourself you were gonna work on. That's how we actually get things done. So treat it like a real studio. Don't have time, make that time. Okay, so these three principles are the foundation for how we're going to get more music done in 2023. There's two more principles that we're going to talk about that will help you make it sound better in just a minute. But let's talk about taking those first three principles and shaping it into a system to actually get more music done this year. And I'll kind of give you examples of how I've done this over the years. So we need to have a system. We need to have imminent deadlines. And then we need to put it in our calendar so we know when we're going to be working on it. And we need to treat it like we paid for that time so we actually go and get it done. So let's say you're fairly busy, but you can block out about four hours on Saturdays from about noon to four to work on your music. Well, I typically find when I'm recording that I can get a source all the way recorded in about one to three hours, depending on the complexity and the song and all that stuff. So let's just say any individual source, guitars, vocals, drums, whatever it is, that it's about two hours to get the recording for one song all the way done. Well, the way I would break this out if I have about four hours on a Saturday would be that that first Saturday, I'm gonna block off from noon to two, then I'm gonna get all my drums done. So I'll figure out the drum part. If you're recording it, then you'll record it. If you are using Logic or GarageBand drummer, then you can just do it in Logic and GarageBand. Spend a couple of hours really getting that part how you want it to be. Then I'll record all of the bass from two to four. So I'll get all my bass recorded, knocked out, arranged exactly how I want it to be, the performance that I want, any editing I need done. And then I'll come back the second week, the first two hours from noon to two, I will record all of the guitars for that song, get them all recorded and arranged. And then from two to four, I'll get all my vocals recorded. And then the next week I'll come back and from noon to two, I'll focus on any sort of production element. So if I need to add any sense or percussion or anything that just helps keep the listener engaged, I'll do that for the first two hours. And then the second two hours, I'm just gonna do any final editing, any vocal tuning, anything like that that needs to be done to get it ready to make mix. And then I'll come back that fourth week, I'll mix it from start to finish in one sitting. I think this is really the best way to approach mixing. Don't let it drag out Parkinson's Law. If you give yourself a week or a month to finish a mix, you're going to take a week or a month and you're going to work on it over and over and over again. And it's not going to be as good as if you just sit down and knock it out. Don't let your ears get fatigued. Just knock it out in one sitting taking breaks, but in one short window, right? So I typically find it takes me three to five hours to mix a song. So a four hour block is a perfect amount of time to really get all your mixing done. And then I would export that mix out and I'd spend little pockets of time throughout the week listening to it on different systems, on my AirPods, in my car, and I make intentional mix revision notes, things that will help me improve the mix. And then on week five, I'd come back and for the first two hours, I just focus on mix revisions, getting a little bit tighter in the mix. And then I would export 
record it out and master it. And then in five weeks, I've fully finished recording, mixing, and mastering an entire song. This is actually very similar to how we're gonna be approaching doing our fourth full-length album this year, but more on that in an upcoming video. So just think about that. Just a few hours a week and we can be fully finishing a project. And what's great about this is that because you know you're gonna get it done, you don't have to be stressed about it. And every time you sit down to work on it, you know exactly what you're working on. Today, I'm gonna to do the drums and bass. Today, I'm gonna to do the guitars and vocals. Today, I'm gonna to mix it, right? You know exactly what you're going in. You're going in with intention the same way you would if you're going into a studio. But let's say you have a little bit more time and you can say, dedicate an entire weekend, two days where each day you're spending six to eight, maybe 10 hours working on recording and mixing a song you could easily knock out one song every week if you have that amount of time. You could sit down on the first day and in two hour chunks record all of the song. And then the second day, you just dedicate that to mixing and mastering. And in a weekend, you finish the entire song, right? And this is actually how Broke Royals recorded our first 20 songs, I think. Our first three EPs were all just in weekend blocks where the singer would come down, we'd spend two days recording the first day and mixing the second day, and just knocking out a bunch of songs in a compartmentalized way where I knew when it was happening and the rest of the times I wasn't stressing about it. Okay, so the specific schedules that we're talking about here aren't necessarily what's going to work for you. You have to figure out what will work for you, how much time can you dedicate to this, and when can you work on it. But now that you have this kind of idea, this concept, all you have to figure out is how how much time can I dedicate to this a week and when, and then put it in your calendar and break it out thinking about what are you going to do each time to work towards getting a song done? Do you want to get a song done in a week? Do you want to get a song done in a month? You could easily get a song done in a week if you have two hours a day. If you have two hours a day, drums the first day, bass the second day, guitars the third day, vocals the fourth day, mixing half of it the fifth day, mixing the next half of it the sixth day, mastering it the seventh day, song in a week, right? Any way that you want to chunk this out, you could easily get all this done stress-free and just know that you're continuously working towards that overall goal of getting more music done this year. So think about it and actually let me know in the comments how much time do you have a week to work on your music and when and how many songs do you want to get done this year realistically. Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Okay, so let's actually go ahead and jump into the fourth principle, which is the 1% better rule. This is where we're talking about actually making our music sound better, not just recording more music and getting more done in 2023, but making it actually sound better this year. So the 1% better rule is another idea I picked up from James Clear, uh, Atomic Habits. This is the idea that nothing really happens in huge jumps, right? It's usually incremental process that when you look back over the span of a year, oh my gosh, I can't believe how much I've grown over this year. But the incremental steps, they're not super obvious, but they can make a huge difference. So for example, if, if we're applying this to recording, what I like to think about is, can you just make everything just 1% better, take that knowledge you have from the last time you did it and do it 1% better the next time. So when you're first recording, just getting it done is your only goal, right? But the next time you're working on a song, can you get that guitar tone 1% better? Can you get that drum part 1% more interesting? Can you get that EQ, can you understand EQ better and can you get it set 1% better? Not drastically better. You don't have to worry about being a total EQ expert, although I do have a course on that. You don't have to worry about that. You just need to be thinking, can I just get this a little bit better each time. And if you can get 1% better across your entire recording mixing process, then all of a sudden that's probably going to sound 10% better. And if you do that, 10 times throughout the year, you do just 10 songs throughout the year, you could easily improve your overall sound three times from what it was at the start of the year. You could look back on your final mix compared to the first mix you did in the year, and it would be drastically different. And that's the power of this system, is that if you finish a song a month or every six weeks or so, over the span of the year, you're going to finish 10 songs. And if you actually finish 10 songs, then each time you do it, you just stair step up. And over the span of the year, you get drastically better. When you look back to your January mix compared to your December mix, you'll see a huge difference, right? So don't worry about huge drastic changes. Focus on the system and just getting 1% better at every step along the way as you're going through this process. By the end of the year, you're going to be here compared to where you were at the start of the year promise. Okay, the fifth and final principle that we need to be thinking about is getting better at anything is a combination of learning and applying and applying and applying and applying. That's the 
doing it 10 times over the span of the year. But it's a combination of learning and applying. But you don't just want to randomly learn. You need to learn very systematically. So that's what this whole channel is dedicated to. That's what all of the band guide is dedicated to. I have so many guides to help you out with this. I also have entire courses that go way more in depth on this stuff. And if you're really, really serious, then the first thing I recommend you do, if you don't already have it, is grab my six-step checklist to a pro mix. It just walks through the six steps that all professional mixes have and how you can do them inside GarageBand or wherever it is that you're working on your music. It's completely free from link in the description below. And this guide is really going to help you out. It's the fundamentals of all mixing. So you can't go wrong with this. It, it also gives you a guideline on where you need to be focusing your learning. Maybe you realize, oh, I just don't really understand this one step compression quite as well as I thought I did, or I don't really understand it at all. So focus your learning on that and just focus on, again, 1% better each time you're working on a song and it's going to stair step up over the span of the year. And factoring in something like a more in-depth course, like my ultimate GarageBand mixing course can really help you improve your mixes over the span of the year. So taking education and factoring it in with applying and not favoring one over the other. If you only ever learn and you never apply, you don't really learn. And if you only ever apply, you don't ever really learn. You can pick up some things, but it's hard. You, it's much easier to stay around here if you're never also learning. So learning is gonna be a big part of that stair step, that 1% improvement as you go. Those are the five principles of getting more music done and making it sound better in 2023. I hope this was helpful. I have a lot of really exciting stuff coming this year. Be sure to grab the six step checklist to a pro mix from the link in the description below. It's really gonna help you out. If this video was helpful, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next week with another video. One thing at a time